Okay, so here's a walkthrough of a new subassembly I made for the prefab prefabricated modular retaining wall. This subassembly will allow for a um, an iterative design process between civil and structural. First of all, the attachment point is here, which is six feet from the gutter line, basically straight above the moments lab. The reason I did this is so that um, the pavement layers to the left here of the previous subassembly will be able to uh, terminate in line with the pavement layers that are on top of the moment slab. And by building these pavement layers into the moment, into the um, this overall assembly, it will allow me to have the um, the bottom subbase layer terminate at the moment slab. So this line under here will actually not show up in the actual cross sections. So this part of the subassembly, the pavement part, will follow the super elevation of the roadway. So if the roadway, as I slide this up here, if the roadway was super elevated in this direction, give it a second, you would see that only a sliver of the gravel of the gravel subbase would actually be showing up. This is this line down here again is something that wouldn't show. There is a limit here, super elevation of six percent. If it's if it's uh, greater, there would be some additional work I'd have to do. But my understanding is the max is six percent, so that's the highest it will accommodate right now. All right, so this is attached. Then the uh, the civil engineer will also specify what the target surface is. So this is the CFPL3 barrier. What will happen is the target surface will be specified and this subassembly will determine this point, the point of intersection of the face of the wall and the target surface. That's right here. And it will, by default, go down four feet. It'll construct the leveling pad, a uh, level area here, and one to one till it daylights to that surface. So there are two points that will end up being hit on the target surface. Now here, here is where the um, the coordination comes. We can, in plan view, extract what are called feature lines from the corridor. I've got it set up so that we could plot uh, or extract this point as a two as a three dimensional line this point at the bottom of the barrier, top of the panels, this point where there's daylight with existing ground or some other surface, part of the design surface, and then this point down here which is the um, top of the leveling pad. So when those points are extracted from the model, they can be projected to a profile. So structural can be given a roadway profile it has the profiles of all of these key points. Now if we can show them uh, some very basic steps that would allow them to actually then edit these profiles, particularly um, the bottom here so that they can level level and step the footings as opposed to it always being parallel to the daylight, line, daylight point here. Then as they adjust the elevation profile of the base that four foot default depth value will be overridden. This line down here represents the target of the proposed profile that we would get from structural. So if that distance is um, is changed from the default four feet the subassembly here will revise accordingly. So you can see as I drag, as I increase this elevation here, the space up here differed or got smaller. See, smaller as that target point changes. It would it would actually get to a point where if the if the um, block second block doesn't fit, it would disappear.
There you go. Now, this wall face, the exposed face, can be up to 30 feet. So what would happen is, if the profile that, that uh, structural provides would bring the base down, um, you know, way down here, the assembly will add additional blocks at two foot step increments as required. So you can see here, this is obviously uh, well beyond four feet below existing. So in, in reality, the surface would probably be down here somewhere if the wall was going to be that high. And this side will always um, rebuild itself depending on the relationship between the top and the target. So as I said, you can go up to 30 feet. So this wall face, as I drag this down, additional blocks will be um, added. Now another thing that's happening here is there are points being established up here in the top left and down here in the bottom right. Those are the limits of wall excavation. We got one foot over on the left side and straight up to where it hits the um, subgrade of the roadway and then over here as I mentioned before. So these points can then be also extracted and shown in plan view. Um, the areas you see here, this yellow, this area here in yellow, those are the materials for structural backfill. And as I, sh as I showed you, depending on the depth here, those um, areas redefine themselves and you can then extract that piece of, um, of material quantity. We'll also be able to get the overall excavation required to put this in, the uh, excavation below the surface. So what will happen then when you exceed the 30 feet, it's not going to work anymore because I didn't build in the additional blocks. So at some point, here we are. This is the number of blocks that would get you to 30 feet, and it's not. There's no more added. Um, I asked what the maximum height would be for this kind of wall, and the answer was about 30 feet. So we don't make it to to accommodate any larger. So that's basically how it works. This is the cemented stone masonry wall, Mass Highway Standard. The way it works is you attach it to your slope subassembly. So this becomes the outer subassembly of the overall assembly. You then specify a daylight surface target, which would be called wall face daylight surface. Once you add that, the wall face will daylight to that surface, it will then calculate based on the minimum parameter of a foot of cover on the footing. It will calculate the height of wall and thereby provide the D, D depth, the W depth, and then the overall width, which is half of the height. If the minimum of four foot of cover over or from the surface to the bottom of the footing isn't met, then it will um, basically re rearrange itself so that this dimension will become greater than a foot and you'll get your overall four foot minimum. The um, user needs to enter the slope coming into the back of the wall, which by default I've set to two to one. And then you also have to specify the depth of the material of that slope which comes into the wall. And I've assumed that was loam by default and given it a point or four inches anyway. So when that parameter is in place, this will be able to determine your excavation limits by going over one foot from either side. In this case, going straight up 
to the target surface and on the left side it will go straight up until it meets that slope parameter. You can then determine in, in the um, area shaded pink what the structural backfill quantity volumes are. I've also got this prepared so that you can uh, get the total of PSI uh, 4,000 PSI concrete for the um, for the top here, the coping, as well as for the footing. And then you can either you can get one or both of uh, the stone itself. You can get the volume of stone, or you can get the square footage of wall face, above ground, below ground, and total. So that provides the quantities. You'll also be able to get the overall excavation quantity as part of an earthwork number.